Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're chatting with a guy whose barbecue business plan is so good, you'd think he invented the word. Hey family, hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. This is episode 133 of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast and tonight we're talking with Paul Lang from Smokey Q in Perth, WA. But before we get into that, I've just got a couple of announcements that I need to run by you first. The first is I want to give a big thank you and a big shout out to our podcast partner for this episode. It's Jagged Woodfight, also from, from WA there as well. If you're in the market for a new barbecue, smoker, grill, you've got a custom fit out you need to do, Hit up Glenn and Jules. Glenn is an absolute whiz on a welder. There's pretty much nothing that guy can't build. So contact them, hit them up, and they'll get you sorted. They are fantastic people, and they're a very welcome part of the Smoking Hot Confessions family. The second thing I need to let you know is, of course, well, I don't need to let you know. You know it's happening. Christmas is coming. But what I can let you know is that we have just restocked our online store. So if you're after uh, some T-shirts, some hoodies, um, some different uh, tumblers and whatnot, we've got all that gear. It's all been restocked. It's available in the shop right now. And with the way things are at the moment with COVID and whatnot, I'd recommend ordering early so I can make sure it's under your Christmas tree on that special day. While you are at the Smoking Hot Confessions website getting your T-shirt and your tumbler, Make sure you uh, put your details into the pop-up window and we will send out our free ebook to you. It is the Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. It's a really cool little bit of gear. It's everything you need to know if you're just at the start of your journey and we will shoot that out to your inbox. And the next thing to tell you is about the Facebook group. We, do ha- we have the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue community on Facebook. It's a wonderful place. It's full of like-minded barbecue folk. We actually focus on barbecue. Surprise, surprise. So if you want a barbecue group where all the guff is left at the door and everybody's friendly and welcoming and we all just get along, this is the group for you. Check it out, Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Community on Facebook. And the last thing is if you are watching this video on YouTube, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get a notification every time we upload the next episode. If you're watching on Facebook, give us a like and a share. And if you've got a question for either Paul or myself, write it in the comments and we'll make sure we get back to you as soon as we can. If you're watching on Instagram, give us a little heart and the follow. We love those little hearts. They're so cute. And if you're listening on a podcast app, particularly if it's an Apple, do give us a five-star rating and review. Those five-star ratings and reviews are really helpful because they tell Apple that you like the show and that Apple should push the show out to more people like you, which in turn really helps me out and I will love you forever. So this episode today, as I said at the top, we're talking to Paul from Smokey Q. He's a chef from Perth in WA. And I actually first met uh, Paul at Smoking on the Water in 2018. If you want to catch that episode and uh, head back to the festival, you know, back in the back in the pre-COVID days when we could go to barbecue festivals, head back to episode number 54. I had, it's a long way ago. Just a reminder, today's episode 133. So yeah, that was a while ago. Episode 54, check that out. It's a fantastic festival. Paul was one of the people that I spoke to there. And look, I got to say, I was impressed with the man then, in, with the conversation that we had there about what he what he had to say about the barbecue business side of things. And in the two years that have passed, i got to say, he has blown me away with the work that he's done. So that's what we're going to get into today. And I'm sure you don't want to hear it from me. You want to hear it from Paul. So without further ado, let's get him in here. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? Paul, welcome to The Confessional, my friend. It is fantastic to see you. Good. Hey, Ben, how are you, mate? It's good to see you again, too. Mate, I am great. It's Friday afternoon. I've got a cold beer coming to me soon. I think I just saw you have... Yeah, you've started one there before. (laughs) Yeah, it is a good day to be a barbecuer. Yes, it is. So, mate, tell me, what was the last thing that you barbecued? Uh, Let me think. Uh, Sunday night, I cooked two racks of pork ribs and a couple of racks of uh, beef shorties. I had some friends over, and uh, they've been waiting a year to have some of my ribs. So, um, yeah, it was worth the wait. And which did they prefer, the the, the porkies or the beefies? Um, it's a, most of them prefer the pork, but I, I prefer beef over pork. Why's that? Uh, I, I just like the texture of the beef ribs. I, I love pork, but I, I just love beef ribs over pork ribs myself, yeah. And... And my family like them 
overcooked and I like them bite through where they, they should be. They like them with the bone pulls out and that's a sin for me. I just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they tend to go a bit mushy by that point, don't they? Yeah, that's it's, you can't cut them. They just sort of fall apart, but that's how they like them. So I've got to cook them how they like them. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, there's no point yeah. spending that money if they're not going to eat it. No, no, that's right. <laughs> Look, yeah. I'm I'm with you, man. Beefy's all the way, hundred percent. Yeah. So, what is your favourite barbecue then? Uh, it'll have to be. Look, I'm, I'm fairly attached to my drum smoker. The Red uh, Hot Chili Smokers built me, so they built me one of those custom ones. I think you might have saw that at Chidlow. I did. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I use that, but I, I pull that out on special occasions, and and that's like my Christmas barbecue when I cook heaps of food up and I load it up. Um, but on a daily basis, it's my Weber's. Um, I use them every day of the week, gas or charcoal. Um, and I just like the versatility of the Weber's. Um, yeah, uh, they, they're they quick to get going. They're easier to control the temperature. And it's yeah, they're just a good all-rounder. Mate, so good. Yeah. Now, you said Weber's and you mentioned gas and charcoal. What sort of yeah. mixer you got there? So I've got a, I've got a Weber, uh, Weber Q because... That's great when you you get home from a busy day and you just want to crank it up and cook a steak in 10 minutes. You don't have to light charcoal and it's really, they're versatile or a Sunday morning breakfast, um, you know, you're eating in 10 minutes time. But most of the, now I've got a bit more time on my hands um, because I'm smoking you full time. So I get to cook barbecue every day of the week and I can put it on lunchtime if I want because I'm t- I run my own show. So um but yeah, the the charcoal Weber, um, I've got uh, eight charcoal Webers, the the full size, um, <laughs> and then I've got about four Smoky Joes, a couple of Jumbo Joes, and a Go Anywhere. That's quite the collection. Yeah, yeah, I've I've um I've started collecting different colours that you can't buy in Australia, and uh, just last week I had took delivery of a new copper Weber. All oh, right. Yeah. So did you have to get that in, like privately imported or? Yeah, so I've. I found a bit of a, a bit of a trick. I can't tell everybody because it's a secret. Well, just tell me. That'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I've, I've, <laughs> uh, so it's um, called myus.com and and it's basically a freight forwarding company and you basically they have all the big stores in America. So I just – nothing new. I just bought a, bought a Weber from Walmart. They sent it to the address um, that I put down in uh, wherever it was in America and then they – packaged it up and sent it to me and from time of ordering it to getting it it took three weeks and 300 australian dollars wow yeah i i thought i, thought I was going to get ripped off to be honest i thought i'll just buy one and see how it goes and i couldn't believe it it turned up in three weeks it's on my doorstep this new copper weber I went this is gold so i've gone and bought a blue one and a green one and uh, they're on way now right so so myus.com do they they provide you with that US address for the initial yes, shipment, correct. and yes, then they correct. and then they forward it on to you. Yeah, because the 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 thing the thing if if you um if you if you're buying and you have it sent to an Australian address from say Walmart, they won't ship. And if you say on um, Amazon you buy Weber, the shipping seven hundred dollars for the Weber. But because you're shipping internally, and all internal shipping is free over about fifty dollars in America. So you send it to that address, which you pay a ten dollar a month subscription for that right, but you know it's paid for itself in the first shipment anyway. Yeah. And um and no, don't get me wrong, I support all the local dealers in Perth, but when you can't get a certain colour, you're gonna find a way to get it, you know? Um Yeah. Yeah, so and that's until I get all the colours I want, that's what I'll keep doing, I'll just keep buying them out of the US and um yeah. So that's so good. That's so good. Yeah. And that yeah. and that and that three hundred bucks was that just the just the charge from myus.com or did that no, include the kettle? So one hundred and sixty five for the kettle US and then oh, fifty oh, US oh. for the shipping. Oh, that that was only fifty bucks to send it to Australia. US, yeah. So all up three with the conversion, three hundred uh, Australian landed in uh, my doorstep, and um and and the same Weber in a black Weber in Perth, you know, is five hundred no four ninety nine. So. Yeah, it's 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 a tough one, but I, I did I saved a bit of money, but it wasn't about the money or saving or anything. It was about getting the colour that I wanted. Yeah, well, when you're a collector, then you know that's yeah. that that's what Im- what's important. That's it. Because when we do when we, every month we do um, a, a photo shoot and cooking, so I've got new content for my social media. So I hire a film crew, photographers, and we film for the whole day. 
So I like to have all the different color weathers and, and it looks nice. You've got different things happening, different sizes, different colors. And when you've got the little jumbo Joe on the ground, you can get over the top of it, the camera and get some nice shots. So yeah, it's, it's just a good mix. And I suppose for cooking when we do photo shoots. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So is that, is that copper one then? Is that the, the rarest one that you've got? Yeah, no, it wouldn't, uh, the, the rarest one I'd, I'd say would be the lime green and the ivory uh, Smoky Joes. Wow, I don't think I've ever uh, ever even seen them in those colours. Yeah, I, I bought them two years ago in Berlin at the Weber store in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not just a Weber collector, you're like a, a an international Weber man of mystery. Yeah, that's it. I've travelled to all parts of the world to find a Weber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it, we we went to Berlin. Uh, we went to Europe two years ago, and um, my my first port of call was the Weber store in Berlin. And I got a couple of t-shirts, and I bought Ben at the Outdoor Chef in Perth a Weber uh, hoodie because he wanted a Weber Berlin hoodie. So I bought him a, a you know because you can't get them in Australia with Berlin on it. And um, and I bought the two little uh, Smoky Joes, and they just put a strap over them, and I got my kids to carry them around and hand luggage on the airplane. So it didn't cost me any more for luggage. It was it was perfect. Nice, nice. I've I've done something similar on my trips to the states. I bought a Smoky Joe, put it in my wife's suitcase the first yeah. year. Bought a Go Anywhere the second year, put it in the wife's suitcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. I just want to loop back to something you said there before about the Weber Berlin hoodie. What? Why was it so exclusive that it have but that it had Berlin written on it? What's that like? Is that is that a particularly famous store or? No, well, it, yeah, it's got one of those giant Webers out the front that you see in some stores over over in Europe or America. But also, um, it just had um, Berlin with, um, I think they've got a, a lion or a dragon as an emblem, um, Berlin. And so I had, uh, like, on the sleeves, I had Berlin with that lion. And uh, so it was just, you know, it was something that you'd never get if unless you went to Berlin. And so I said to Ben at the outdoor chef, he's a good fella. I said, I'll get you one. And so I bought it, brought it back for him, yeah. Oh, very nice. Cool. Yeah. So um, tell me about then, uh, how, how did you get into barbecue? Well, it was, it was on another holiday. We were in Vietnam in 2016 and uh, I've, I was, um, we're on a honeymoon and um, we went to this barbecue place in Ho Chi Minh City and it was called Frank's Barbecue. Uh, sorry, Jake's Barbecue, because it's named after my wife's son, Jake, and uh, so I'll never forget it. So I went and it was an American fella. I think he was from uh, Texas, and he was welcoming. And, and and when he had dinner there, and he cooked some awesome barbecue. And I've been a chef, you know, all my life, but I've never really experienced American barbecue because it's, it's not a cuisine that you're familiar with. You don't go chasing it. It's like you cook Australian or French or, you know, other cuisines but American barbecue isn't something I've never really tasted, uh, proper American barbecue. So that was in 2016. I got the, the, the baptism of fire and, um, and I had a look at his little smoker out the back and um, thought, man, this is cool. So when we got back from Vietnam, I was straight into um, one of the local shops and I bought a Huck um, um, Pro Pit um, offset. Yeah. And bloody hell, it took me about a year to get used to using that because just lighting this fireball is bloody hard work, you know? and controlling the fire and after it's it's like anything trial and error you you and you'll get used to it but then and then I, I and that sort of got me into barbecue and then I thought oh well I need to buy some rubs um to put on the meat and um and a lot of the stores in Perth only had American products so I thought oh shit, why is this you know and um I thought oh, I might just make some of my own and um uh, I got a few recipe books and find, found out what you no know, different regions in america how they do their rubs and but then i added my own sort of twist to it being a chef i thought no these herbs or flavors will work with different proteins so i i developed my own flavors and and i gave them to a few mates in the industry and in cooking world in perth and they said man these are really good you should you should sell these so so i come up with a name and um and that's the story i suppose it's gone from there three years wow just three years yeah yeah huh. So good. Um, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to sort of dive into Smoky Q in the, in the second segment. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to sort of sidetrack you here a little bit. Yeah. You're a TV star. No, uh, yeah, well, I haven't had any questions. <laughs> <before. laughs> um, yes. Yeah, it was a very interesting uh, two weeks of my life, uh, February just gone. 
so t- yeah, so so tell us about uh, Dipper's Backyard Barbecue Wars. Yeah, so we we filmed at Hackenham for two weeks uh, back in February this year, just before the the Iron Gates come down in Melbourne. <laughs> Uh, so we filmed eight episodes of Dipper's Backyard Barbecue Wars. It's season two, and um, I'm biased, but this is probably the best season that 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 they've done. It's, it was you get you get better every time you do something. So of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, just happened to be that I was in one of those seasons. <laughs> but all the blokes uh, on there were really good barbecue, you know, um, champions in themselves, and everyone brought their own flair to it, you know. Daniel Verby and 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 David the the uh, Filipino fella. He's a chef, really good chef, and he put an Asian flair and spin on it. And and Russell, um, he he's um, he's runs his own barbecue business in Sydney. So and then we had Josh from Queensland, and he he builds barbecues. Uh, it was just an awesome two weeks. A lot of beer got drunk and a lot of meat got eaten. Um, we had a lot of fun. It was long days, and um, and then. It just you know, to- so many takes um, to do things. I'm, I'm uh, the worst. The, the most disheartening thing was when you spend all day cooking and you put up a really nice meal and they don't get to eat it for two hours and it goes it goes cold. It's like man, this is. I was actually stressing out and I'm going, man, you got to eat my food. It's hot. No, no, this is TV. You don't eat it when it's hot. <laughs> so. Yeah, so that that was um, that was really good, and it's, yeah, it's been on for about four or five weeks now, and um, it's on Seven Mate, and you can watch it on Catch Up TV. But we got to use my products, and a few of the teams use my products as well. So they, I took a heap of gear over and said, "Look, it's there if anyone wants it." Some people already had their own recipes formulated, which is fair enough. But a lot of the fellas tried and went, "Oh shit, man, this is all right." So they use they use my products as well. So. It was a win-win, really. I, I, I got on TV. I got to cook, uh, doing what I love doing, and got to showcase my products to the, the country. That's such a fantastic opportunity. How, yeah, how did you, was. how did you come across that opportunity? They called me. Really? They rang you? Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. I know it is. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So and and I actually. Um, I sponsored the last um, the show before, uh, so the series before. So I I just sponsored. So when they had each week that I had giveaways of my products on their Facebook page. So I didn't. I wasn't like a major sponsor. I just gave away product for them for each week for giveaways as prizes to their customers. You know, but then they rang me and they said, "Oh, we'd like you to be on the next episode." Um, I said, "Yeah, I'm down with that." Um, look, he hooked me up and um, it bring me over and away we go. Yeah, right. That's yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So you're a chef. There was a Filipino guy who was also a chef. Yes. There was a pit builder. Yes, that's um, Josh from Queensland. Yeah. He was the only man. He was the only man on the show that had to, that was allowed to wear thongs the whole time. Because <laughs> he's from Queensland, so we accept, we accept that. <laughs> I was gonna say, well, they are technically safety boots up here. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and then um, Nathan Roberts. Um, um Dan from Sydney um he runs um his own barbecue business as well so there's a couple of blokes that do barbecue full time as a business in like food trucks um then there's Josh he builds barbecues he's he's built like this cool barbecue and it's out of this looks like an old steam train okay yeah it's really cool he built some awesome barbecues um they're showpieces and then uh Nathan and Daniel Verby um and then david uh, the filipino chef and yeah so it was a good mix of blokes and and of course dipper you know <laughs> he's a funny bastard <laughs> <laughs> did, did he get on the tongs this time or was he still the judge no nah, he, he 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 tries to push in and and and, and show you what to do but he, he <laughs> it leaves it leave it to the experts i said <laughs> did he get slapped away a couple of times Yes, yeah. He heat the bombs up and grab him on the leg with it. <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah. right, nice so, right, yeah. yeah. He's a good 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 sport dipper. He's um yeah, he's been around the traps and um you know, he's he was a he was a good footy player back in a bit I think it was nineteen forty three or something that he played football. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, it was a good show and, and it's given me a bit of inspiration to um, maybe look at doing a show in WA and if I can get, if I can get, I've, I've got the contacts, but getting the sponsors on board to help fund it. So I'm, I'm sort of in the talks now with a few people and maybe doing something in WA next year. Wait, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sounds like great stuff. Yeah. So with that with that eclectic sort of group of uh, of uh, competitors from from different backgrounds, you uh, you said that there was a lot of creativity there. So did it sort of stick to being creative within American barbecue, or did you start seeing Filipino style barbecue? Did you start yeah. seeing tropical fruits coming in from the the fella from Queensland and all that sort of thing? Exactly. Yeah. So the, um, Josh from Queensland, he loved using bananas and pineapples and um, macadamia nuts and all sorts of crap, you know. And and then uh, David, he he was doing like a traditional recipe that his mum used to make him when he was a kid. And, and wow. And and it went. Sometimes it went over the top. They were using like smoke guns and bubble guns. They thought they were Heston Blumenthal, whatever he's called, you know, with bubbles and smoke. And I said, this is just going too far, man. We just got a barbecue, eh? And um, and and uh, I did I did my uh, famous Vegemite scroll burgers, and I think they were they were about that high. And I had like a wooden skewer in them, hold them together. And Dipper says, how the f and hell am I meant to eat this bloody thing? Make me something I can eat. <laughs> It was always having a go at us about making everything too big, you know. Um, but, you know, we thought that the bigger the better is TV. It's got to look good. Exactly right. And it is yeah. American barbecue. Bigger is always yeah. better in America. Yeah, that's it. But we did some cool things. I did on the bullet smoker because it was it was a tough one. So you're cooking on barbecues you've never used before, though, the uh, Na- Napoleons, which are a good, good unit in themselves. Um, but, you know... You're not they're a little bit different to a Weber or what everyone else is used to. So, and one day you might get a bullet, next day you'll get a kettle, next day it's a gas barbecue. So, you it's first in best rest. So, whoever, whatever dish you are cooking, you'll go, All right, I'm going to get that gas barbecue today because I've got to boil some water on the side or something. So, you know, um, so it was good, it was a good mix of um barbecues. Um, but the the coolest thing I cooked on the uh, bullet was some chicken pies in a nice pup pastry delicious yeah yeah and i did um and i served them with a side of chicken wings and our chicken wings i coated in my pork crackle crumbed up and then coated the chicken wings so they were amazing so i think i got a nine for that that day and um yeah that was a good day for me yeah i i, I dare say it would have been you sent me a bag of that pork crackle to try man that was that is something else that's so yeah, good pretty good eh? it's uh yeah we've got some new flavors that coming next year yeah it se- sounds awesome yeah. So tell me about um, about the the future for the Dippers Barbecue Backyard. Sorry, Dippers Backyard Barbecue Wars. Will, will you be back again for another season? Look, yeah. If they ask me to come back, I probably I probably would because it's 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 good fun, you know. And you and you get your name out there and, and showcase your products and meet some good people and see different things that you don't normally see when it, you know comes to barbecuing. Just everyone does things differently, so you're always learning something. So that's the thing I, that I like the most is seeing seven other different people cooking barbecue in a little bit different way you do. If you're looking for your next barbecue smoker or grill, Jagged Wood Fired has got what you need. Owners Julianne and Glenn are multiple award-winning barbecue competitors who have even travelled to the US to compete at the World Barbecue Championships in Houston, Texas. Based out of Perth and shipping nationwide, Jagged is one of the largest pit builders in the country and has an ever-growing lineup of meat cooking machinery. Not only do they have their now famous smoker ovens, their incredibly efficient gravity-fed cabinets are proving extremely popular in commercial settings, and they also make some of the most stylish asado grills you're ever going to see. Jagged is also well known for amazingly detailed custom work ranging from backyard designs all the way to installations in commercial kitchens. Proudly Australian designed, owned and manufactured, you can find out more at jaggedwoodfired.com.au, spelled J-A-G-R-D. Once again, head to jaggedwoodfired.com.au, spelled J-A-G-R-D, to learn more. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. All right, now, Paul, it's time to talk about Smoky Q. Now, um, I mentioned at the top of the episode that we met in 2018, and so if you got started in 2016, you went from first discovering barbecue in 2016 to, yes. uh, and I met you at the end of 2018, so it would have been less than two years. It was you just had, over a year. Yeah, you had the business up and running and a stall at a, at a festival. So, yeah. mate... 
tell us about how the business got started, how Smoky Q got started. Well, there was obviously um, when I first saw the barbecue uh, sh- shop in um, Ho Chi Minh City, and then I come back and I bought a smoker and I started making my own rubs because a lot of the rubs that I could find were all from America and and a lot of them had MSG in them and things and thing. And I just want to, I want something that's a little bit more clean label and, and flavors that I like. So I thought I'll just make my own. And, and I gave them to a few friends to try and I said, these are really cool. And uh, so I thought, Oh, I might, I might just get a label designed on a logo and put them in a bag and sell them on a website. You know, I thought this can't be too hard. And um, wasn't I wrong? <laughs> um, <laughs> I found it doesn't matter when you when you're selling uh, any product. It doesn't matter how good your product is. If people don't know about it, you're not going to sell a, a thing. So um, yeah, so we started July 21. It was my birthday. Oh, I sold my first product um, in July 21, 2017, and um, yeah, and we're just just been going. Um, our, our, our business is probably. On a, it's doubling in every year. It's pretty much doubled every year what we've done last year. Wow, doubled yeah. every year. What do you put that yes. down to? Um, persistence, hard work, um, spending a ton of money on marketing. Um, oh yeah, so yeah, my online store is uh, is an animal on its own. It's like a separate. It's just a separate. It's, just, it's actually run as a separate entity to Smoky Q now because it's so the sales are so um big it's it's crazy and um and that's that's that i can talk about for a little bit and say it's that comes down to two things i learned you've got to have a really good company that helps you with marketing when it comes to online stores they need to know they know their and i've found a company and i've partnered with them so um so we're business partners in um in a couple of different ventures in perth one of them being the online store so they do all my marketing um uh, they do all my copy, my ads, everything. And I um, I run the store and they do the back end stuff and I do the front end stuff. So it's a great partnership. And yeah, it, we, our sales are up every month. We're up 20% on last month. It just keeps growing because of our... Wow. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. Um, because of our reach, I think, because we're we're in people's faces every day. But it's not, it's not only that. We've always got new and exciting content on our ads. Um you know, and we, you know, we have recipes and we get our customers involved. We encourage them to post recipes and, and nice. share with other people. And yeah, and I think then it comes down to having a good offering. If you've got a, a good, a good product at a fair price and you give a good customer service, the rest comes, you just got to be persistent. Yeah. So what do you look for then when you, when you're looking for a good partner? Um, uh, well, it's hard to say trustworthy. I think you got to find someone because you can't, it's hard to say you're going to trust someone from meeting them from day one. You got to find, I, f- I found in them, they have already got runs on the board with their jerky business. So they've been running, going four years now. They've got 16 stores in Perth and a huge online presence. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so I found um, partnering with somebody that's already successful, it's got to be, it's got to be a recipe for success for you, for myself it's it's a no-brainer really and and we had a good synergy where they're all young fellas and they know modern and hip and ahead when they really know what it comes when they're marketing online and know what to look for and i'm the older the older bloke that's sort of a bit more wiser and um and i do all the more the the business development stuff so it's just a great partnership and and it works and yeah we're, we're really we're, we're smashing it at the moment it's just um everything we touch turns to gold and it's it's good because you know you hard work for three years and it's finally starting to pay off yeah it, absolutely it is yeah now i've i've actually seen facebook ads at the moment for um for smoky q uh yeah. not so much for the product but to become um uh an investor investor yes 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 yeah. I, the the word kept coming to mind was float but you haven't floated it it's a no, we're, we're selling we're selling well we're having a crack at it um it's not going it's not going as well as i thought i think i think the timing's the wrong time after covid and before christmas i think money's a bit short for people we're we're close to getting our target um our minimum but um i think we'll probably do another raise in middle of next year when there's better timing and then the economy is a bit better so mm-hmm. what we're essentially we're doing is selling 10 percent of smoky q um and selling shares in our business yeah 
to raise oh, okay. capital. We're going to raise enough capital to build a purposeful factory in Perth. Wow, that'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at, I'm actually looking at it one at the moment. It's 650 square metre factory. Nice. Um, so I'm getting automatic filling machines and pouch fillers. And uh, yeah, so I can pretty much um, bring a lot of my manufacturing in house and uh, do a lot myself. And, and it brings costs down and you got more control over your destiny. It would it would lower your production costs in the long yeah, term. Yeah, it I does. Think. It does. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's our plan. Yeah, and if it look if it doesn't happen, it's it's either way I'm fine with it. But I thought it'd be good to share our successes with other people. And um, yeah, so that's that's what's happening at the moment. And for another two weeks, the um, crowdfunding is still going. And so yeah, it's it's ticking along slowly. We've had a we've had a good influx of um, investors so far, but not where I'd like it to be. But you know. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> and, and and as you said, it, it might just take a little bit more time just to get that, uh, just to, right. to, to get it all together, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Now, um, what goes into putting together one of those factories? Well, you you got to find, I suppose, my, my preference is find something that's close to me, uh, where, I'm, where I reside, you know, where our house is. And, um, and I've, I've developed... Uh, food businesses before and and helped in the setting up of the facility and buying equipment so yeah it's a it's it's pretty straightforward really you just got to find enough square meter enough enough space to um fully enclose a room with cool room panels so you can put in an auto fill pouch machine and then i'm going to put in a, a a source manufacturing plant and auto bottling machine uh because we we're launching uh we, we were launching a range of chili sauces next year. Nice one. Yeah, Very cool. Yeah, I've, I found a niche and um, I found, yeah, there's a bit of, yeah, it's a growing, that's another story for another day. Um, so auto bottling uh, machine, um, auto f- pouch filling machine, and then enough warehousing space for, you know, for pallets and to offload containers because I buy containers for products, old products directly out of China. Now, like all my packaging, I buy 44 containers now of everything and wow. so yeah so it's yeah it's just it's just going from strength to strength each each month it's crazy well like when i first started i'm going i need to buy a thousand bags that's like a hundred bucks a hundred bucks and i'll scratch around in my wallet to find a hundred bucks now i order everything in fifty thousand unit lots it's like that's a small amount <laughs> God, that's amazing so what yeah, yeah what sort of unit turnover are you are you doing like every every quarter I'm roughly going through a one and a half ton of rubs a week in 150 gram pouches. I can't <laughs> even do that math. I can't. One and yeah. a half tons in 150 six, gram. Six point six bags to the kilo yep. times one and a half tons. It's a lot of bags. Nine thousand bags or something. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. It's it's like that because I get yeah everything's in pallet lots now and um and I get my rubs made in half ton batches. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. You, so you're operating through a co-packer at the moment? Yeah, I've got two co-packers, one in Perth and one in Melbourne. Oh, righty Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, um, and it's because you, when you get to a certain growth, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket because if that basket falls over, you've got no eggs left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, wise so, thinking. Yeah, so I've got a small co-packer in Perth I started with who I'll stay with forever. Um, for uh, some of the products, but the co-packer I use out of Melbourne, they're one of the biggest co-packers in the Southern Hemisphere and um, and they're out of reach for a lot of people as well, which makes it good. So their minimum batch run is a half a tonne. So so it makes it harder for, it's, it's a harder ent- entry point for competitors when you're you know, talking half tonne batches. When you're doing half tonne batches, your cost of goods comes down a lot. So... Mm. So you can be more competitive in the market. So that's that's a good thing. Plus they've got their own in-house product development team and QA people. And so I've got access to product development and that they were they were sort of forefront and helped me develop the honey and bacon rubs with their technology. Yeah. That honey bacon rub is so good. Yeah, yeah. That's it's decent, so mate. good. That's now our biggest seller. We we sell a half a ton of that every three months. I would not be surprised by that no, at all. Crazy. I cannot believe how much we do of that. It's fucking out of control. And yeah. I like it. Um, I, my kids like it on popcorn. I'd make popcorn and put a sprinkle on their popcorn. For, they love it. Yeah, it's good. 
I'm going to try that. I haven't thought of that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of bags of rub going on. Um, and, yeah, but the factory, back to the factory, um, it's just finding the right equipment uh, and not jumping in and buying anything too quick because you can burn money real quick if you buy the wrong equipment. So you've got to do a lot of research and see products or bits of equipment in use in other fa- facilities. And as soon as we can start travelling, I'm going to go um, over to to Europe to see other production facilities that do similar things to find the right fit for us. Yeah, right. So yeah. would that be you're just doing like recon on machinery or would you be looking for a co-packer in Europe to start? No, uh, just re- recon on uh, machinery because um, I, I believe that the, the WA is a good place to be when it comes to manufacturing because it's the gateway to Asia. <laughs> Um, and and uh, we've got a big port here. So if I, um, in the near, not distant, too distant future, if I, you never know, I might start exporting to America. That's on my bucket list. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that's, um, we're in discussion with a company at the moment, um, but I need to go over there to speak with them. The, the Yanks, they don't like doing things via Zoom meetings. They like to shake your hand and sit and have a coffee. They're a bit strange like that. Oh, Okay. Yeah, so I've got to go over there. I've got to hit the ground and uh, go over there and meet with them, do a presentation. So as soon as we can fly, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm off to the US. That'll be awesome. Yeah, and yeah. Best of luck to you on that one. Oh, yeah. Look, that was my that was my my first priority is to try and beat the Yanks at their own game. They've been flooding our shores with rubs for years. And I thought, right, this this young fella, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to get, even if it's a couple of products into the US, um, and, and if I can pull it off, I'll, that'll be like um, a, a coup for me to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I dare say. That's yeah. kind of the kind of the bucket list goal of, I think, almost every barbecuer that makes their own rubs. Yeah, that's it. Just sell it to the Yanks. And uh, so, yeah, we've got and, – and in that, in that um, space, we've got a new bags being developed at the moment. So um, I'm getting bags custom-made and fully printed. So they're going to have a, a good Australian sort of theme on them. So – if they do hit the shores over overseas, people will know straight away where it's from. Yeah, that... um, we've got we've got a good presence in Singapore and Hong Kong. We're in the Ryan supermarkets there. Wow. Yeah, and I've just got a distributor in Myanmar in Burma, who's a one of the biggest Wagyu distributors in Asia. So they're going to be stocking my products and selling them as well. So that's a good partnership to have. Yeah, it is. And and they contacted me. You get. You, you get these wacky people contact you and go, oh, we want to buy your rubs. And um, where are you? In Burma. What? Don't you do stir fries there? Like, <laughs> <"What> the <hell?" laughs> well, so, from from now on, they're going to be doing honey bacon stir fries. I oh, know. So, um, yeah, so that's their first consignment left a few months. Oh, it was a month and a half ago now uh, on the ship. So it should be there soon. And, um, yeah, that's – so we've got, a, we've got a fairly good presence already, but I really want to target America's – sheer population and numbers you know you if you can get something in there and get it into a large chain of stores um then you you should have a bit of luck i suppose yeah well i mean compared to here it's a it's a seemingly bottomless market over there it's like it's it's just endless yeah it's a it's a huge market the rub and source market over there and and there's a lot of products out there but i suppose the the thing I see with all the American products coming in, they're all in the same shaker with a similar sort of label. They're all made in the same factory, just with a different person's face on the front of it or a name. And yeah, they might be a little bit different of the, the flavor profiles to suit the pitmaster that developed them, but it's all done in the same place. So you, you get something in there that's a little bit different. Um, you know, you might have a bit of luck. At the end of the day, I'm going to give them my best shot anyway. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, one thing that I realized we haven't actually talked about, we've talked about all these great products. We haven't talked about what the products are, and I can see a giant uh, row of them um, behind you there on the on the shelf. Give us a bit yeah. of a bit of a bit of a chat about what you uh, what the Smoky Q lineup is. So we've got eight rubs. We've got our um, our fierce bull coffee rub, which is um, it's it just won another award at the Perth Raw Food Awards last two weeks ago. We scooped the pool again. That's the third year in a row we've won awards at the Perth Raw Food Awards. So we got, and this year I entered the charcoal rub, which I never entered the other other two years. I thought, no, they won't be interested in that. Well, we got a gold for that this year. So, wow, and that got, and that got us champion for salts and seasonings, uh, the charcoal rub. So I was really happy with that. 
So we've got our coffee rub, beef rub, honey bacon. We've got our smoked honey, um, our barbecue sauce, zesty, uh, this new range of sea salt blends. So these are going, these are going gangbusters. Um, so we've got um, the zesty sea salt blend with Australian lemon myrtle and lemon zest. And we've got the ever popular, I said I'd never do this, SPG. <laughs> salt, pepper, garlic, yep. I know. And you know what? This stuff sells like bloody sliced bread. It's that popular. But I, I put a bit of a twist on it. I've got Szechuan pepper in it as well, just to give it a little different flavor profile. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. And this one, a good all-rounder, a chili sea salt blend, and it's all all made with Australian sea salt flakes. Um, and the, it took me a while to get them right because – when you're sprinkling salt on something and you need to have flavor and if you put too much salt on it's gonna to be too salty and not have enough flavor so i had to really load it up with the spices and the herbs uh, to get that flavor so you got the right salt and spice portion on the meat that you're cooking and it works and it goes really well the zesty is really good on seafood i cooked some lobsters with it a couple of weeks ago on the weber and it's really nice that Australian lemon myrtle is just a beautiful flavour. Mate, I love that you're bringing some of those, um, like the native Aussie flavours in there as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. That's um, you got to use, you got to, and that's it. You got to use different flavours. You can't just go with the same old all the time. I like to, you know, just go outside on the, the limits a bit and test the boundaries. And then we've got our charcoal rub, rib rub, chipotle, chicken rub. We've got a new one here, which is. Off the charts, mate. This is. I have to send you a bag of this. That's at the Ghost Chili Rub. Oh, yes. Ho, ho, ho. yes. And it's got warning signs on it. It's a million Scoville units. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah, it's it's. Hot. Um, yeah. So I did a as a bit of uh. So the Jerky Co. They they did a uh, new beef jerky. Um, uh, a reaper jerky um, just as a limited edition thing and they sold it with a t-shirt and i developed the rub for them for the reaper jerky so i i actually develop a lot of their seasonings for their jerkies and biltongs yeah, awesome so um then i said all right i want to do a rub because i've 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 sold a lot of chili sauces on my website i buy i buy a lot of sauces from my mate David from Mofo Chili Sauces, he um, does a great blend of different sauces and he runs a good burger shop in Fremantle here called Big Rigs and they do the best um, southern fried chicken burgers in WA. Wow. Yeah, so he, he makes all the chili sauces and I buy them and I sell them on my website for him and, and uh, move them through hundreds of bottles a month of his chili sauce because it's so good. And then he said to me one day, you should do a really hot rub, you know, that'd be awesome. And I said, all right, so I did. And um, so I got some ghost pepper powder and, um, oh, far out, man. I, I didn't want to try it, but I did, and it, it, it burnt like hell. <laughs> and we just did 500 bags as a test run to see how it's going to go. But I think in in a month now, I've already burnt through about 200 bags. And wow. it's selling really well. So it might, it might end up find a spot on our permanent range. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, so... And then yeah, we've got the pork crackle, um, but we've got we've got a massive amount of products coming on next year as well in development. So we're, we're going to do another source. So um, you know you'll get a little insight into before it's launched what we're doing. Um, so our barbecue sauce. So this this barbecue sauce here, yeah, it's got a real real nice um, hit of tamarind and vinegar in it. It's real thick. Um, we're going to do another blend of that with uh, sriracha. Excellent. Yep. So a barbecue sriracha, and then and then in conjunction with David from Mofo, we're going to launch a range of chili sauces. So he's going to develop some chili sauces for us, uh, smoky Q sauces, um, and uh, our new bags. Obviously, new bags are being designed. Um, then I've got a couple of new rubs in the in the wind as well. Uh, two new flavors of pork crackle. And um, and a 500 gram shaker of rubs. Wow, that's a big one. Yes, um, and it's and it's it, every uh, look. I'll say one in every hundred customers says you should do shakers, and this has always been a sore point for me. And I thought, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to do shakers. I'm going to keep doing my bags because they're really popular. They're, they're easy to ship. 
Um, it keeps the cost down and there's less wastage with landfill and, and there's just enough plastic out there. If you can try and do a little bit, you know, for the, I'm not a greenie, but if you try and do a little bit and try and keep your wastage down, it's a good thing. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to launch a range of 500 gram shakers um, and then, then people can buy three bags to refill it so they're not buying a shaker every time. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, and then give them a discounted price on three bags to fill the 500 gram shaker because that's equivalent to 450 grams in, and um, then they don't have to buy the shaker once, um, and then get the whole range, and then they just buy the bags to top them up. You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd Ben Arnott. Alrighty, so we're into the third segment now, and this is the part where our, our, our guest expert gets to share some wisdom and some knowledge with the listeners and the viewers. Now, one of the things that you said to me that really stuck out when I first met you in 2018 was you said that prior planning prevents piss-poor performance. That's correct. And uh, I, that just, I, I'd never heard that before. That just really stuck in my head, and I still remember it now. And yes. one of the things that you were talking about back then was um, the importance of a business plan. Yes. And that, that obviously works for you. Like you, you've obviously yes. written a very detailed business plan and then followed it through. Yes. So I, I thought we might um, sort of open it up and see if you could share some wisdom to other, other yeah. people watching and, and listening who have a barbecue business of their own or want yes. to start a barbecue business and they need to know where to start with business planning. So I'm going to throw it over to you and just sort of yeah. let you, let you mm. share your knowledge with us. Yeah, no worries. And, and another point you could take away today is to fail to plan, you plan to fail. Definitely. Yeah. So it's, I've been in the food game all my life and the last probably 10 years I've been in um, business development in some large food processing companies here in Perth. Uh, so you learn, you learn how to do things properly and you see how things are done on a large scale. So in any large company that I work for, you've always got to have a business plan or a sales pipeline. And, and when you start a, any business, you can, you can start and, and just by sheer luck be really successful. But a lot of people, and especially in this industry, if you can't scale your business, you always, you, you'll have a little good business, a little cottage industry, you can sell at the markets in 20 butcher shops. But I started my business planning on selling a million units a year and that's that was my goal. And, and you've got to start with a manufacturer that can do that and, and achieve that plan for you because if you don't you won't be able to scale your business and grow your business and become you know a global player in the rub market and that's my goal um so i wrote a yeah i wrote a business plan and you know it, it cost it cost a fair bit to to do that at the start because you're paying because you're getting smaller batches done uh from large manufacturers the cost is higher so you got less margins but there's the key to any business is make sure you're making money for yourself. If you're not making money, it's not worth doing it. You get too emotional. I see this all the time in barbecue businesses like food trucks and catering. They get mixed up in this whole, oh, it's hit man, you know, we're going to cook barbecue and drink beers. And guess what? You work your ass off all weekend. But if you're not making money, it just ain't worth it. You've got to, you've got to have a little bit for yourself and your family at the end of it all to make it worthwhile. So do your costings and constantly do your costings and recost and always find better ways to buy without sacrificing quality. And that's the key is never, never try and do something uh, and sacrifice quality to make more money. And that's something, you know, I, I, I use the coffee I use, for example, with my coffee rub, it's the best coffee I can buy in Perth. And that's one of three gold medals. And I one day said to my wife, I might try a different coffee. Um, I might say five bucks a kilo on coffee. She says, are you a kid? Why would you want to do that? She said, you've won three gold medals. People love it. Why would you want to change to say $5? Don't be a kid. So I put that right away. It's like, you've got to, you've got to be smart and never sacrifice quality for price. And that's for any business, you know, it doesn't matter what commodity you make or you're selling. Um, yeah. A business plan is important. So write down what you want to achieve in the first month, the first quarter, then the first year, and then work out what it's going to cost you to do that. And, and I think, yeah, I think make sure you, you always got to make sure you've got a bit left over for yourself. Um, at the start, it's going to be tough. You know, you're going to, you're going to struggle through and you're going to wonder why you're doing this, but don't go into business 
wanting to make money, going to business, wanting to produce a good product and provide a good service because the money will come. And that's always been my philosophy. It's never, you know, oh, look, I've had crazy offers of people to buy my business off me um, in the past six months. Yeah, I'm talking wow. six figures, okay, by large companies. You know what? I don't want to sell because I love what I do. That's what I get up for every morning. I love what I do. If I sold my business, yeah, I can kick back and drink margaritas and ride my Harley every day. But guess what? I mean, as bored as bat. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's not about the money. It's about having enough to survive and, and do the and look after your family and have and live a good life. But um, it's it's not about yeah. You know, I don't do what I do for for money. Um, I do because I enjoy what I do and I enjoy seeing the the satisfaction I bring to people when they cook with my products and they they enjoy it. That's what gives me the most satisfaction. Yeah, no doubt about that at all. So yeah. goals, steps to achieve the goals costs to achieve the goals yes. what are some other essential elements of a of a solid business plan be um be loyal to your suppliers and don't chop and change all the time to save money because you see that a lot in in the barbecue industry people chop and change butchers all the time because they get a 20 cents a kilo down the road but you gotta you gotta build a relationship with any supplier or customer and and nurture that relationship and if you do when times are tough, they'll they'll work with you and help you, you know, and they'll and they'll support you. But if you if you use and abuse everybody, and it happens all the time, you see it. People use they just they just out to use and abuse everyone they can to make a quick buck, and and it's happening a lot in in the, the barbecue scene is is rife with that. There's pop ups coming everywhere. There's there's more barbecue pop ups in Perth now. Than I've seen in, like in any other pop up food store. We like these. We've had our run of tacos and nachos and burgers. Now there's just so many barbecue pop ups, but the, only the good successful ones that are consistent will survive. You know, that's you've, yeah. That's it's, a, it's. I think it's a bit of a fad to be honest. I think the fad will wear off eventually, and because consumers are going to get sick of eating brisket in bread all the time. You know. It's. I love it. I'd, I'd never get sick of it, but the consumers are the ones you've got to change it up all the time because they'll get sick of it because they're the ones that are paying you to cook. And if you don't keep it different and, and exciting, they're going to walk and go somewhere else and buy something that's a little bit different. So always be creative and at the forefront of development. And that's what I do. I, I look at what trends are happening in the market in food and I get read reports of what's happening in the U S and Europe in different food trends and flavor profiles. And so then I'm developing things ahead of my time, you know, and pushing the boundaries and yeah. So always plan. Yes. Like you said, the prior planning prevents a piss poor performance. Excellent. Excellent. So yeah. is that, is that creativity, um, do you think, the, the the key to building sustainability into your business plan? Yeah, and, and yeah, creativity and 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 passion and and you're keeping it exciting because if you do the same old thing every day, it's going to get boring for you. It's definitely going to get boring for your customers. So, you know, you got to you, you do have to turn, change it up a little bit. You know, there's there's some people doing some really good barbecue pop-ups in Perth and there's a lot of good burger shops and there's a lot of ordinary ones, but the ones that are succeeding are the ones that are consistent and the ones that always got something different on the menu, you know, um, a burger of the week or a burger of the day or whatever it might be. You've, you've, you've got to keep it exciting because people get bored. You, you, you go to the same place every time and have the same thing. You're going to get bored and you're going to go somewhere else. So, it's the same with any business. Yeah, gotta keep it exciting, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, it won't do you wrong. Well said, mate. Well said. Look, I think that's probably a good point now to uh, to, to start wrapping things up. You've d you've just summed that up beautifully. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to throw the studio open to you again now and give some shout outs to people that uh, that you want to give shout outs to and some thanks and some praises. And also make sure you do tell everybody where they can track down Smokey Q on the internet. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I suppose a shout out to Every one of my, I think, 18,000 loyal customers now in Australia that buy online. Nice. <laughs> a shout out to all of my uh, loyal shops that buy our products and have done since we started. You know, there's a lot of them in Perth that have stuck with us from day one and and they're still our biggest customers, you know, the butchers and the barbecue stores. Um, so they're, 
they're they're detrimental to our business because they're at the coal face talking to the customers every day. Um, a shout out to um, well Ben for letting me talk on on this amazing podcast that you do. <laughs> Um, and a shout out to my family. They probably won't read and see this, but without their support, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have what I've got today. Yeah, the the family is absolutely the the backbone of all of our little enterprises, isn't it? Well, mine's a little enterprise. Yours is a big enterprise, but uh... yeah, yeah, it started little. It's just it's, I've, yeah, it started little, and now it's it's taken a path of its own. <laughs> yeah. So um, tell us where we can track you down on the internet. Uh, so it's www.smokeyhue.com.au um, and then we've got our stockers page. I don't update that all the time, I, I, I but I, we've got over 500 stockers now in Australia. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and um, so, yeah, the, the website, obviously, um, and then our stockers, uh, you go online and search stockers and you'll find them in your area. Um just on, on a side note, we actually we've we've created this really cool thing, um, and we're going to roll out in a few IGAs. We're testing it at the moment, but we're going to create a barbecue hub in IGA stores, um, and we're going to roll it out to about three hundred stores nationally in the new year. Wow! So what one, what I'm doing is I'm going to have Smoky Q branded smoking wood, Smoky Smoky Q products, and then we're going to have like a res, um, recipe streaming across on a screen above this hub in front in the supermarket. And then we have a gateway beacon that tests and measures everyone's movements there and how long they spend there and tracks their spend and puts push notifications to their phone. So we wow. get really high tech with the way that we sell products and interact with their customers. So that's that's sort of something we're going to roll out in the new year, you know, middle of next year, um, into you know a lot of stores. Uh, we've been trialing it here in um, a store in in WA and it's worked really well with in store demos and tastings. And creating like a hub for everything barbecue, charcoal, wood, rub, sauce, utensils, it'll all be branded Smoky Q. So good, man. So good. I can't wait to see that. Well, look, I'm 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 gonna say thanks for coming on board the show. It's been great to have you here and absolutely fantastic to get that whole Smoky Q story. That's a real Aussie barbecue business success story. Yes. Thanks for having me, Ben. I really appreciate your time and um, always love having a chat with you. So there you have it, family. That was Paul Lang, founder and CEO of Smoky Q Barbecue. How is that for an Aussie barbecue success story? That is absolutely fantastic. He has planned just about everything from the start. All those things that he talked about, he had told me he was going to do two years ago. So it's been fantastic to catch up with him and just sort of talk that, talk through that with him and hear how these tick that off, tick that off, tick that off. It's really cool and it's really inspiring. So I I hope you got a lot from that because I know I did. I've got a page full of notes here that I've been writing down. If you've been watching the video, you can see I've got my little pen and I'm writing everything down. And uh, look, I'm going to be putting a lot of those things into practice here as well at Smoking Hot Confessions. That's going to be really exciting stuff. So that's about all the time we have for today. I'm going to just quickly remind you that uh, we have our podcast partner, Jagged Woodfire, to thank for bringing you this episode. Um, Based out of WA, shipping around Australia. If you're after a new barbecue smoker or grill, Perilla, you should see their Perillas. Man, they are cool as. And of course, the famous steak weights that I like to use in my videos and things here when I'm cooking steaks here at Smoking Hot Confessions. Do check them out. Um, Absolutely great gear and lovely people. We have restocked our shop now, so we've got all our uh, Smoking Hot Confessions t-shirts and different tumblers and things available, so make sure you order them soon in time for Christmas, um, because we know how Australia Post is at the moment, and make sure you, while you're at the website, if you haven't got it already, get that free ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue, that'll tell you everything you need to know to get started, and do come and join us on the Smoking Hot Confessions barbecue community on Facebook, it is one of the nicest places to be on the internet, let's be honest. It is a really cool little uh, little corner of the interweb world. And the last thing is that if you are watching on YouTube, do give us a thumbs up, a subscribe, and hit that notification bell. If you're watching on Facebook, give the video a like, a comment. And if you wouldn't mind giving it a share, we'd really appreciate a share as well. Instagram, it's the love heart and a follow, so you get notified every time we upload the next IGTV video. And if you're listening on a podcasting app, particularly if it's Apple, do give us a five-star rating and review. It's super important to help us out. It tells Apple to push us out to more people like yourself, and it helps us grow our show. And we really, really do appreciate that. So now that I've given you all those announcements, that really is all the time we have for today. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing.
Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions. <laughs>